This is a version of the sermon preached by Nicholas Henshaw, Dean of Chelmsford, at Chelmsford Cathedral on Sunday the 30th of June, the Feast of Peter the Apostle. The reading material available on the 235 train from Manchester Piccadilly to Euston last Friday afternoon was largely confined to the Manchester Evening News and the Evening Standard. And scanning through both, well, it felt like a discussion about leadership on every page. British politics, the G20, fashion, football, themes of power, strength and influence again and again. A visitor from Mars could have gleaned a pretty good idea about what Earthlings think a good leader really is. The thing is, though, the Bible says quite the opposite. The people whom God calls to be leaders normally look like the wrong people from the start and they end up messing up big time. It's, it's worth bearing in mind that actually the Bible never uses the word leader of a Christian minister. So let's look at some examples, Old and New Testament. Jacob the deceiver, Moses the lawgiver, yeah, but Moses the inadequate, who makes so many mistakes that God doesn't even allow him to get to the promised land. Saul, the very first king of Israel, who tells Samuel himself, it's not me, I'm the wrong man, I'm from the most useless clan in the little tribe of Benjamin. David, Saul's successor, the great king. Again, a very surprising choice. Great king that he is, he turns out to be a liar, an adulterer and a traitor to his own people. I think one of the most tragic scenes in the Old Testament is David dressed in Goliath's armour, guarding the Philistine king against his own people. The Bible is telling us something challenging about leaders, suggesting that we need to do something different from what the papers say. Which, of course, brings us beautifully to Peter, Peter the Apostle, one of our three special saints here at Chelmsford Cathedral. Now, in the Roman Catholic Church, there is an ancient tradition that Peter was the first bishop of Rome and hence the first pope. There's absolutely no evidence for this claim and indeed very unlikely that an apostle would become a bishop. That's not a link we get in the early church. But part of me really hopes it's true. Because Peter the Apostle is a fantastic example of really poor leadership, of just how badly you can get it wrong, even when you've met Jesus face to face, and therefore may have something to say to church leaders today. For whenever Peter opens his mouth, he puts his foot in it, almost literally. He tries to walk on water, but panics and sinks. In today's Gospel reading from Matthew, Peter makes the first ever profession of faith. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the long-for Messiah. Uh, but then, in verses tactfully omitted from today's reading, Peter goes so spectacularly off message that Jesus even ends up calling him Satan. And of course, at the Last Supper, Peter proudly refuses to let Jesus wash his feet. And then, when Jesus explains what he's doing, Peter demands to be washed all over. The big one, of course, is Peter's betrayal of Jesus just after he's been warned that he will betray Jesus and having sworn that he won't. I mean, just think about that. Peter betrays Jesus just after he's been warned that he will betray Jesus and having sworn that he won't. Every year, I find that line in Luke 22, verse 61, just after this, absolutely devastating. Jesus looked at Peter what it must have been like to be on the receiving end of that look. Peter's response to go out and weep bitterly is ultimately about his renewal and rescue. But to what extraordinary depths he has sunk, lower even than Judas. If Peter is the rock on which the church is built, as this morning's gospel tells us, what a mess. What a fissured and friable rock it is. Why didn't Jesus choose James and John, the sons of thunder, with all their energy? Or Judas Iscariot for his financial acumen? Or John, because he was the beloved disciple? And Jesus makes it worse by giving Peter a deeply ironic name, Mr. Rock, Rocky, Peter, for the least rock-like apostle among the twelve. No more heroes anymore, sang the Stranglers back in 1977, in a period of disillusionment with leadership and models of leadership. The hero model, so championed in the Manchester Evening News and the Evening Standard last Friday, doesn't really cut it in the end. 
strength, power, invulnerability. Well, the Bible and Christian tradition have always known that we're all very vulnerable. Pretty helpless at choosing the right thing and rejecting the wrong. Whatever Pope Francis says about the Lord's Prayer, we are very easily led into temptation and, very like Peter, find it so easy to justify ourselves. Which brings me to the beach in John 21. It's an addition to that gospel, added because the penny clearly hadn't dropped even after the resurrection. Peter the Rock, the Prince of the Apostles, has done what? Gone back to fishing. Presumably he just wants to forget about the last three years. What a terrible mistake. What a waste of time. And then, there's Jesus, waiting for him on the beach, with breakfast and with the same repeated question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Love trumps denial, calls Peter out of prison, releases him, rescues him, renews his love in return. So an invitation. This week, spend some time on the beach with Jesus. Sit with him and look over your life. Look Jesus in the face and hear him ask you, do you love me? And however tentative, however searching and whatever the cost, like Peter, just say yes.